Automakers are panicking. They are panicking about what they call direct quote. The onslaught of electric vehicles coming from China. The CEO of Renault has written a 19 page letter to the European Union begging them for assistance to combat China's onslaught. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. I've been warning about this for years. I said it would happen for years. And finally, these automakers are waking up. Now, what have they been doing? I mean, seriously, we've known this. We've known this was about to happen. We've known this was on their doorstep, on Europe's doorstep, that China was about to do this, that they were in the process of an onslaught of electric cars, sending them to Europe. Why, did you, why have European car makers been hiding their heads in the sand until now? Renault's CEO, Luca De Mio, released a 19-page open letter to Europe describing an auto European plan to protect automakers in Europe from bankruptcy and against the onslaught of electric vehicles coming from China. That's his exact phrase that he used. Now, obviously, the truth is here that things change. Just because Renault has its own car company now, just because uh, European countries have their own car companies doesn't mean they will in 20 years time. And there's some awareness of this. There's some awareness now that we're starting to see more bankruptcies hit more companies. Mio stated that the center of the global automotive market has gravitated toward Asia. He pointed out that electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids account for 14% of global car sales led by Asian automakers who are making about 80% of those vehicles. China is making rapid inroads, he said, into the all-electric vehicle segment. Buoyed by its huge domestic market, 8.5 million EVs sold in 2023, more than 10 million this year, according to the Chinese Passenger Car Association, is likely, or 60% of the total. It already had a market share close to 4% in Europe in 2022. In 2023, around 35% of all electric vehicles exported worldwide were Chinese. But the truth is, those numbers are misleading. Because of the vehicles that are not exported from China worldwide, well, the majority of their parts actually come from China. Their batteries mostly come from China. As a logical consequence, he said, of this trend, European imports from China have increased fivefold since 2017. The brands with the highest exports in the first half of 2023 were MG and BYD. They were followed by Tesla, which ships the Tesla Model Y from its Shanghai plant to Europe, says DeMio. Now, of course, he was wrong. Uh, Tesla does ship a car from China, from Shanghai, to, to Europe, but it's not the Tesla Model Y, it's the Tesla Model 3. Tesla manufactures the Model Y at its plant in Germany. Non-Asian automakers have made moves to strengthen their ties with China. Volkswagen has bought into Chinese car companies. Stellantis has done the same. General Motors has a joint venture. This is happening now faster than ever as China's EV production just skyrockets and they're making EVs at much lower prices than what the West can afford to do. It's just not possible for Western companies to make them at these prices. In January, Volkswagen changed its board of management and reassigned Thomas Ulrich as the chief technology officer in China to establish connections and develop future technologies in the region. In other words, um, over the last six months, Volkswagen has fired thousands of staff in Europe, in particular in Germany, and it's hired thousands of staff in China. It's bought a software company for $2 billion in China to essentially replace its software division in Germany, which has basically failed to give Volkswagen the product or the service or the actual EV platform that the company had planned to build. Stellantis is another automaker seeking to strengthen its ties with the Chinese automotive industry. Last year, it signed a supply agreement with batteries supplier CATL, the biggest battery company in the world. Um, they are, of course, in China. Stellantis invested in a Chinese car company Leap Motor to expand its global EV sales, whilst Volkswagen invested in Xpeng and in state-owned SAIC or SAIC Motors. 
Tesla has ties to China, of course, through its Gigafactory in Shanghai, but it is the only automaker in China that owns its own factory. Every legacy automaker has a joint venture partnership. Tesla is the only one who basically owns everything it does and therefore profits from what it does or, you know, if something doesn't work, they pay the full price. Tesla Giga Shanghai has become the company's main export hub, delivering Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys to many countries around the world. And Tesla makes more profit from those vehicles that it manufactures in China than it does, of course, from its factory in Germany where it makes a loss or from its factories in the United States. China isn't Europe's only rival though in the growing automotive industry, says Tesla Rati. According to Demio, the United States is increasing its efforts in the expanding global EV market. He specifically mentions the Inflation Reduction Act, which was passed in the US to boost investments in North American battery supply in EV production. And he's concerned that Europe isn't doing something similar. He thinks, well, hang on a minute, the US is protecting their automotive industry, but Europe is not. I mean, this isn't fair, he's basically saying. In this letter, Demio lists 10 projects Europe must actually start now to catch up to China, or at least to prevent European automakers from going bankrupt, and the United States EV industries as well, who it says, oh, he believes Europe is behind the US. Number three on this list is a European Marshall Plan that would create a fund for the growth of the European-based EV industry. And well, he has a point. I mean, realistically, the Chinese government is unquestionably funding a lot of the EV industry. It has invested hundreds of billions into its automotive industry, into providing new technologies, into building battery packs. Uh, the United States government has been doing the same in America. Europe, well, yeah, Europe's support of its manufacturers has been um, less, less prominent, I guess you could say. Demio's proposal is based on the United States' Economic Recovery Act of 1948, signed by President Truman. It was known as the Marshall Plan because it was proposed by Secretary of State George Marshall. The primary purpose of the Marshall Plan was to provide economic assistance to Europe so it could restore its economic infrastructure after World War II. Now, basically, the CEO of Renault is saying European car makers are toast unless Europe supports them, unless they bail them out or um, begin to actually um, institute protectionism. So put huge taxes on vehicles coming from China. Now, the problem with this is European car makers actually make more money selling their cars in China than China makes currently selling cars in Europe. So if Europe were to impose this kind of protectionism, it would hurt some of the automakers. That's why the Mercedes-Benz CEO is begging Europe not to tax Chinese electric cars. It's saying, you know what, let's have an open market. And the reason is because this is working for Mercedes, but other manufacturers, cheaper ones, Volkswagen, Renault, Peugeot, Fiat, these smaller companies, they'll have a much harder time competing against China. It's very possible some of them will cease to exist within the next decade. At least that's what the CEO of Renault currently believes. Thanks for watching.